Hello, and welcome to this special edition of Greater Somerville. I'm Joe Lynch. My guest today is a frequent visitor to Greater Somerville and an ardent supporter of Somerville Community Access Television. She is the multi-term state representative for the 27th Middlesex District and currently running for her fifth term. In addition to representing Somerville on Beacon Hill, she is also a wife, a mom, an attorney by profession, and former multi-term alderman at large here in the city. It is once again my pleasure to welcome to Greater Somerville State Representative Denise Provo. Thank you so much, And thank Joe. you so much. Pleasure. People would think that we're already into summer with the sunlight behind us, but we're doing a pre-taping show. Busy schedule up on Beacon Hill? Uh, busy schedule everywhere. <laughs> there you go. There you go. But there, uh, thank you once again for coming in to do the special taping because there is one subject that I know is on most of Somerville's mind, and that is the proposed MBTA uh, fee hikes and service cuts on a lot of mines everywhere, uh, yeah. certainly throughout greater Boston and through the whole MBTA service region, which covers half the state's population. We're just going to set it up just a little bit for the folks at home. In January of 2012, the MBTA came out with a proposed uh, fee increase and service cut scenario. In simple language, they're going to hike the, fare, the fares on the uh, transportation system that they control, and they're going to try to cut some service routes. Somerville will be affected, no matter which way they turn. I've asked Representative Provost to come on the show today to give us some perspective of why the MBTA is doing this, some of the most draconian pieces of this um, scenario that they put forward. And um, for those of you who have been watching it on Cable 16, the city of Somerville did tape the hearing that was here in Somerville on February 28th at the high school auditorium. I would um, advise most of you, if that is still running on Cable 16, to watch that hearing because some passionate speakers spoke eloquently and intelligently about the impact that it would have on them as residents and businesses here in the city of Somerville. So if you will allow me, I'm going to set it up just a little bit. Certainly. And that the MBTA is not um, an agency that uh, is completely at fault with this. As most of you know, they service uh, the metro greater metropolitan Boston area with 1.3 million trips every weekday. They now have a $185 million operating deficit. Um, that is not all their fault. Uh, in the infinite wisdom of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, they were saddled with $5.2 billion worth of debt, mostly as a result of the big dig. So it is now the MBTA's um, honor to try to figure out how to keep our rapid transit and bus line service and commuter boats and everything else that they control, how to keep that operating without going more into the red. With that said, they also relied on revenues that were expected and projected from the Commonwealth to help support their business line. Um, those revenues have not materialized in any way, shape, or form. As most of you know, we're into um, a very rough, rough seas in the economy, and the revenues are not helping the MBTA out of their debt or their debt servicing predicament. Did uh, I set that up pretty good? Well, that, that is the situation, um, you know, for anyone who's interested in how that situation came about. It was in the year 2000 when um, the way the MBTA did business was changed by the legislature. The MBTA used to run a deficit every year, and the legislature and the state budget would pay whatever the MBTA deficit was, which was a very bad way to run any enterprise. And the idea was that the MBTA would have to have a balanced budget every year, which was a good thing, and that there would be dedicated revenue. At the time, it was one penny out of every five cents on every dollar paid in sales tax, mm -hmm. so 20 percent of sales tax revenue. And in exchange for that revenue, uh, the MBTA took on a substantial portfolio of debt, as you say, better than $5 billion, um, almost a couple billion of which uh, was for what were called transit mitigation mm -hmm. projects. When the state built the Big Dig, because of requirements in federal law, 
the state had to add transit capacity as well as automobile capacity. That's how the original list of transit commitments came about. There were also um, federal requirements for environmental mitigations. Those were paid for out of the big dig budget. The transit commitments were, did not have a dedicated revenue source. The state just kind of strung them along. And then later on when um, the state, under a different federal law, the, the Clean Air Act, um, ran afoul of the standards for the amount of ozone in the atmosphere, mm -hmm. ozone being a byproduct of motor vehicle exhaust, um, the federal government required the state to come up with a, a plan to limit ozone, the state implementation plan, or SIP. And um, the state said, well, how about these transit commitments we've already made? By our calculation, those will bring us into compliance with the Clean Air Act. So now there are two sets of commitments for those projects, but even the projects that have been constructed, and initially those were low-hanging fruit, like more um, parking capacity mm -hmm. at suburban um, commuter rail stops, those haven't been paid off yet, and they're an obligation of the T. Simply put, we are in a pickle uh, when it comes to transportation projects in this Commonwealth. Well, MBTA is the most heavily indebted public transportation agency in the country, although you know the runners up are not too far behind. Mm -hmm. But it's about a third of the budget, which means that every penny that comes in at the fare box goes off to pay debt service. One of the things, before we get into the discussion about actually the impact on Somerville itself, mm -hmm. one of the proposals that I had heard, and, and it was intriguing to me, not mm -hmm. that I advocate it, but it's intriguing that something that Beacon Hill should probably look at is, has there ever been a concrete proposal put on the table to just outsource the MBTA itself? Uh, actually, Governor Weld um, had that concept and... Outsourcing meaning for the folks at privatized. home. Let, privatize. Privatize it. Let somebody else run it. And um, he took the first step, which was to um, put out to bid a bundle of bus routes mm -hmm. that coincidentally would have been the bus routes that served Somerville as well as other northern communities. Um, there were only two bids and it was extremely controversial, and um, Weld left office, and his so successor, Salucci, Salucci withdrew the RFP mm -hmm. for, for privatization. So the second part of it that I heard at the public hearing, which I think got a lot of cheers from somebody, was uh, one of our well-known um, community activists said, why don't we just let the MBTA default? let them go bust and then put it out to bid to private enterprise so that they are not inheriting the debt. If Wall Street can do it, why can't the MBTA do it? Ah, uh, well... Um, You're an elected official. You better be careful about advocating for stuff well, like I, that. Well, I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't advocate for that proposal. Um, if, if the MBTA were to default, um, it, it, you know, since Citizens United um, that decided that corporations were, were people mm -hmm. who had um, free speech rights, um, I'm afraid that, that what we see um, as a practical matter is corporations having more rights than people, and certainly more rights than government. So, uh, you know, municipalities are corporations, and, and municipalities don't, don't have the protection that private corporations right, do. Right. Um, if the MBTA were to default, um, our bonds would become junk bonds, right. and no successor right. agency uh, would. Th we would end up paying higher. Uh, we're, we're getting in. Rates. We're getting into a little bit high of the finance. intricacies of high finance here. Yeah. That, um, as most of you know, just you know, take what we're saying here and try to incorporate that and put it into your own personal life. If you've got debt mountains of debt and you're not being able to keep up with the, with your paycheck that comes in every week or every two weeks and you're not able to pay off your debt service and you're not be able to pay your utilities, you're constantly looking at ways to either cut back on your own budget or increase what you take home from work. 
And bankruptcy is not the same bankruptcy for government. Bankruptcy is not the answer for a it's, lot of these. And it's, it's certainly, well, it may be for private individuals, which is what the bankruptcy law is structured right. for, but not for governments. Right. And right. I, won't, I won't give the, the, the course on why. But the other thing about privatization is, uh, and that's clear from experiments in privatization that have taken place elsewhere, is people will pay more. They will pay a lot more, and there will not be the controls that exist right. in a government right. context on, on how often or steeply fares go up well, we and see, on service. We see that with all other utilities. Yes. We see that with our electric, with our that meant water and sewer. Yep. Still government run, but that's a discussion for another day. Summary of the overall proposed changes. Um, massive by a lot of measures. Um, almost 100 bus routes cut regionally. Um, an end to commuter boat and ferry service. Uh, an end to night and weekend commuter rail service. And um, great restrictions on the ride. Uh, both that service our disabled folks, exactly, our seniors. Exactly. Yep. Uh, both in terms of, of qualifying to get the service in the first place. The, the new rule re would require anyone applying for ride services to be examined by a doctor of MBTA's choosing. And, uh, Excuse me. Uh, and also uh, fare increases, restrictions in service, and um, different fare structuring that would include premium payment um, zones. Um, what the MBTA has done is they put out two different scenarios, mm -hmm. scenario one, scenario two. Let me just be clear, we're not going to spend a whole lot of time on um, commuter boat cutting from Hingham shipyard up, although it affects my brother-in-law who every day, good soldier he is, doesn't want to put more carbon into the air and leaves his car at home, takes the commuter boat. Former transportation uh, director here in the city of Somerville, now lives in Hingham gets dirty looks every day from his fellow commuters who take the Hingham Ferry because mm -hmm. of that. So we're not going to spend time on that. We are going to spend time that the overall scenario, and I'm going to read off a of cheat sheets here, is that within one scenario, it's a 43% increase in fares. In the other scenario, it's a 35% increase in fares. The ridership impact, as um, Representative Provo was, was describing, massive root cuts all throughout the metropolitan Boston area. So we're going to try to take a look, little bit of a look at mm -hmm. Somerville. The folks who can least afford an automobile in these both these scenarios are the ones who will be most impacted. Uh, alas, that is so. Our seniors, our disabled, and our students. Yes. Simply put, they're going after those who can least afford it because of the percentage increase. So and just in case you know somebody wants to download this, this document is on the MBTA's website. We're going to give information about how to comment about this. The comment period for uh, expressing your displeasure or your approval of these is March 12th. Yes. March 12th. And I'm going to give it a couple of times during the course of the show, but the website for that, uh, to submit it by email is fairproposal at mbta.com. So if you want to continue submitting your comments and tell them that they're out of their minds by going after the most vulnerable in our society, written comments should be sent to the MBTA at 10 Park Plaza, Boston, 02116. Uh, or you can call them at 617-222-3200. So when I look at these, the seniors get a 175% increase. Yes. The students get an 83% increase. Our seniors who are disabled are getting a 150% increase. This is outrageous. It is. It is. And um, it, it is probably the number one priority for most legislators, certainly within Metro Boston, if not the entire MBTA service area. Um, but. Not so much folks who represent people living outside the MBTA service area. It and doesn't that's part of the them. problem. Well, on for, at first blush, it may not affect people outside the MBTA service area. However, 
those all drivers in the state through the state rely on MBTA because if it weren't for MBTA there would be so many more cars on the road That's right. so much more congestion That's right. so much more trip delay and um, much worse air quality which not only has health costs for individuals terrible health costs right. but it has political and economic costs for the region and um, and just as public transportation has an economic value, the cuts to MBTA service are a terrible threat to the Massachusetts economy overall. Let's go back to one of the points that you made, Representative Provo, which is, you know, for folks who have to take their private vehicle mm -hmm. because of the nature of their work, they or may be a sales live. rep or they may be, you know, a private business that has to have mm -hmm. their vehicle on the road, this is going to affect you folks. Because let me tell you something, if you have massive amounts of people in the city of Somerville who no longer have access to public transportation specifically because of the route cuts or because they can no longer afford the MBTA, you're going to have a, a whole lot more automobiles, private vehicles on the roads first thing in the morning in the city of Somerville. Any of you who have traveled Medford Street know that Medford Street backs up sometimes all the way into Medford, Medford. itself. And that if you think that that's not fun, you know, uh, uh, let them do their, their draconian fare increases and service cuts, you're going to see a whole lot more private vehicles on the roads here. So it does affect you. We're, we're not saying that, you know, it's life or death for the, the folks who have to take their vehicles, but you know, for some of these folks who, whose jobs are in Cambridge or Boston or out on 128 or north of the city or south of the city, public transportation is the only way they can get back and forth between their jobs. So we're moving on a little bit from, uh, you know, our seniors and our, our students, and now let's get into the working class here in Somerville. Yeah. What, what effect is it going to have on them? Well, um, it's going to have a tremendous effect on people who need to get to their jobs. And you know, the other side of that, it affects the employers who are expecting people to be at their jobs. On and time. Punctually, yes, On time. punctually. Right. Um, and you know, as, as constituents have contacted me since this proposal was first rolled out, I've, I've really been stunned by the commutes that Somerville people take in order to participate in the economy, that people from Somerville work in Burlington, in Waltham, in Wellesley, mm -hmm. in Newton. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they work on the North Shore, they work on the South Shore. Um, Let's do a little bit of reverse commuting here. And, you know, we know as residents of the city that we don't have a huge commercial base. No. We don't bring a whole lot of people into the city in the morning. But there is a good number of people who work here in Somerville but don't live here. That reverse commute is going to affect them as well if some of these bus routes are, are cut or we increase the fare so much that they can't afford it. Regional transportation will be affected and the regional economy will be affected. This is, it's a huge thing and, um, and it is the fruit of MBTA having to have a balanced budget sure. and the fact that the sales tax revenue, which was predicted to be a reliable income stream, has become anemic. Um, you know, there are a couple of factors there why the sales tax has never met projections, a couple of recessions, and also the growth of internet sales. Um, you know, back in 2000 when projections were being made based on the trends in sales tax mm -hmm. revenue. Mm -hmm. It looked like a decent sort of revenue, right. but it has proved to be well, not it's, the, so it's much. failed to materialize. Yes. So now it's, you know, in typical business fashion, okay, well, we didn't meet the revenue, so we're going to have to start cutting. Well, it, it, it is, you know, it it does produce some revenue, but not to the extent of need. The other thing is, is fixed costs have gone up. The MBTA sure. is the single largest consumer of energy in the state, and energy costs have been rising on an average of 14% annually. Fair point, Representative Provo, because just like anybody else in this day and age, they have incre cost increases for fuel, for energy, yep. for health care, 
for the ridership. I mean, all those increases are out there. Yeah. So they've got to absorb that and figure out a way to pay for it. Let me go back to one point that I was Dude. making earlier, which was about folks who, because of one reason or another, whether it's family concerns or the nature of the business that they do, they have to take their private vehicle. Mm -hmm. There are a number of folks in this city who take their vehicle to Leachmere and park, mm -hmm. or they take their vehicle to Wellington and they park. You're also going to be affected by these fare increases because I'm looking at okay. The parking, the fares at uh, at the parking lots for the MBTA at Leachmere itself, those are going up 27.3 percent. At Sullivan Square, those are going up 27.3 percent. It's affecting everybody. Um, yes, yes. Moving into scenario one, scenario two. So now what we got, we we've kind of kind of have the picture here that our seniors, our students, the poor the commuters who take their vehicle one place mm -hmm. or another, folks who are trying to do the right thing by leaving their car at home and commuting on a commuter boat, everyone is going to be affected by these two proposals, no matter which way we look. Yep. So I based agree. on what you're hearing, I did see you and I appreciated your comments up at the public hearing mm -hmm. at the high school. Based on what you're hearing, both from the MBTA side, and by the way, we might want to add that uh, Davies, Mr. Davies from the State Department of Transportation who is kind of watching and guiding yep. this whole thing, former general manager of the MBTA, yes. uh, spoke this morning here in Somerville at a yes. Chamber of Commerce special, uh, Government Affairs breakfast and gave no indication as to which way this was going to go. I'm guessing because he doesn't know. Uh, the Speaker of the House spoke this morning to the Boston Chamber of Commerce and did not suggest that any relief for the MBTA would be coming from, from the state the, itself. From the state budget, yes. Right. And um, you know, anyone who looks at the governor's budget that came out in in January, the same month as the um, the the proposal to increase fares and cut services came from MBTA, um, will find no mention of MBTA in the governor's budget which is interesting in and of itself. Well, you know, uh, if you can duck and cover, duck and cover, I guess. You know, one of the things that I wanted to say from a personal standpoint is you, you and I both and many, many other people here in the city have been advocating and fighting for rapid transit on the Green Line extension. Disappointing news that it's delayed, delayed, delayed. Um, but one of the service cuts that they are talking about is the 80 route, which comes right mm -hmm. up Medford yep. Street. And if any of you in the city have ever looked at the bus stops uh, along Medford Street first thing in the morning, it boggles my mind why they think that that is a route that they can cut. Well, any of the, actually there are six routes that are going to be cut in Somerville, all of them enjoying tremendous Healthy ridership. ridership. Yep. Um, and many people spoke at the hearing very eloquently about, about particular routes. Um, and how they use them, going to work, taking their kids to school. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And and um, some of some of these buses make connections for which there there is no substitute. For instance, the right. 85 bus that runs from Spring Hill over to Kendall Square. Mm -hmm. um, you know, someone pointed out that 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 route was established in 1930. Um, As a crosstown. Well, almost there, cross town. The, yes, there there had been trolley tracks on Summer Street, and when mm -hmm. those were taken up, the 85 bus was instituted. It's an essential piece of neighborhood infrastructure, just like the water supply and the drains, and um, and it's one of the very few routes that, as you say, is cross town. It, it goes north south. It mm -hmm. goes between uh, between Somerville and. Um, a, Kind of Cambridge to down the to south. Cambridge, but yeah. but along along a sort of north northeast right, right. or northeast northwest corridor. Right. There's not really a substitute for that. Most of the people in the city who say en enjoy the use of the red line, if they live on Winter Hill or the middle of the city, they go way west in order to backtrack right. and go east. Right. The some of the bus routes we have um, enable people to make trips which they either otherwise can't take at all through transit or which would take hours of backtracking in and outing to accomplish well, other transit routes. I will tell you, Representative Provost, it makes absolutely no sense to most of us in my neighborhood that they're willing to cut a bus route 
before we actually get the green line in, which runs parallel to Medford Street. It makes absolutely no sense. I'm going to say it again before March 12th. Call the MBTA, write them, email them, let them know your dissatisfaction with this on any of the proposed bus route cuts. The fare increase is a little bit different. It's a little bit different. They may have to parse this out, and for the general populace, you may have to absorb a fare increase. For our seniors, for our disabled, and for our students, I say no way. Well, yeah, I think there there needs to be um, more um, a more equitable distribution of the burden. I'm quite certain there will be some measure of fair increase, um, but to raise bus fares this much in one go is a burden on people, particularly in this economy, particularly with, with some of the disproportionate effects. That, that needs to be readdressed. But, you know, I can understand your ire. I felt it when I first read these proposals. But MBTA is in a box. They have sure. to, they have to balance their budget. They don't have a choice about that. And they don't have a lot of options. And they've, they've really done a remarkable job of maximizing non-fair revenue in terms of um, Excuse me for one minute. This is the, the downside of filming during the daylight. If okay. you just want to push a little bit back, because this, there you go. All right. The um, sun is just gleam, streaming in on both of us okay. today. So it feels and, good. And we're illuminated. There you go. Um, and I hope we're illuminating, too, to the viewers. It's important. You're, yeah. you're, you and Senator Jalen, Representative Shatino, Representative Toomey, you're the ones up there fighting for us. So. Yes, and um, and you know, and certainly other um, legislators in the in the MBTA area um, know that this is important, and people are involved to to different extents, depending on their communities. But Somerville is a heavily transit dependent community, and yeah, and I know that. I know that, and, I, and I'm, I'm learning more and more about the intricacies of, of that dependency, of, of just how inventive Somerville people are about figuring out how to get all over the region using connecting mm -hmm. trips. Mm -hmm. and, and one of the terrible things about these proposals is, is for a lot of journeys, uh, one essential piece would be removed with with some of these service cuts, and you can't make the whole journey if, right. if a single essential piece is taken out. You know, I, I think, Representative Provost, I think the vast majority of people in this city do do the right thing when it comes to understanding that vehicles pollute, mm -hmm. vehicles add unnecessary burden to our way of living. Mm -hmm. There is also that side of us that understands there are certain people who need a vehicle, a of private course. vehicle, but public transportation for many, many people in the city of Somerville is a lifeline. Yep. It's a lifeline not only in terms of their mobility, but in their day-to-day -day living. They have to get to jobs, doctor's appointments, school. Um, they're juggling, some of these folks are juggling two and three jobs at a time. Yeah. You, know, the, you mentioned school. The MBTA buses provide the route to Somerville High School, That's right. for instance, for many, many students. And um, I've learned recently that um, in, in Boston, where many students also take the MBTA service to school, the, the Boston School Department actually heavily subsidizes those trips. And, and so this, this will be an enormous hit for the, the school department budget sure. in Boston. Um, so, you know, the, the ramifications are, are enormous. You know, um, my, my colleague who represents Concord pointed out that if weekend service is cut on the commuter rail, that the families that come out to Concord to visit their incarcerated family members will not be able to do so. Yeah, yeah. It impacts everybody, no matter what the socioeconomic um, climate that we're, it's going to impact everybody. It does. So I want to thank, we are running out a little bit out of time. We could spend a couple of hours talking about it, but. And I can tell you what I'm doing. There you go. Come back. I'll always come back. Come back. Me. State Representative Denise Provo has been my guest today on this special edition of Greater Somerville. 
Remember, again, the deadline for comments going into the MBTA about the service cuts and fare increases is March 12th. Should be sent to the MBTA, 10 Park Plaza, Boston. Call them at 617-222-3200 or email them fareproposal at MBTA. Thank you very much for joining us. We'll see you next week. Thanks.